hello students in today's class we will read about the energy stored in a capacitor okay so uh, like uh, so far we were reading about capacitor capacitance potential electric field lines energies work done and so many things and then we came to this instrument also we are aware of various definitions but what we are not aware is how is a capacitor is storing energy and how much energy is being stored in a capacitor how to find how much energy is stored in the capacitor so this is what we are going to read in today's class okay let's get started with the class i will explain the basics and how we are going to go ahead with the topic in the first slide and then we will continue to the next one first of all uh, like conductors make capacitor conductors make capacitor and capacitor have a property that is known as capacitance its ability okay capacitance capacitance is c and it is denoted as a constant as a constant which do not change with the change in charge or the potential no changes due to change in charge and potential but it changes according to the shape and geometry of the capacitor plates show variation with respect to size shape and geometry of capacitor plates now this capacitors are defined capacitance is defined we read about the e that is electric field line electric field which moves from positive charge to the negative charge then we read about the potential potential is the amount of work done amount of work done for bringing a unit test charge from infinity to point r any point which we have defined so far that is potential then we have read about the work done work done work done with respect to potential is given as v into dr okay or dq whatever it is like uh, in this we are using a distance over here so this is defined with respect to the distance w is work done uh, the potential under that from where we have brought like this is the potential area having a potential of v and this is infinity point from here to this point we are bringing our charge q okay so this is the distance r so work done is the potential into the r1 so r okay so that will give us work done and then this work done in a system or in a capacitor is stored in the form of potential energy this work done is stored in capacitor 
plates as potential energy as potential energy okay potential energy is energy by the virtue of position of something okay position of charge because we are bringing this charge from infinity to the point p uh, and in the potential v so the work is done and this work done in this system is stored as potential energy why not kinetic energy because the charge which, which coming which is coming from infinity to point p is not moving after coming to point p but is stable but there is a change in the position and hence the potential energy plays a important role no kinetic energy because at point p charge is not moving kinetic energy is energy in a system by virtue of its motion by virtue of its motion what about the potential energy potential energy is by virtue of position okay so that is the difference and hence here energy is stored in the form of potential energy now this is the basic now we will start energy stored in capacitor topic basics how uh, there is charging of capacitor happening how due to this charging charges are accumulating generation of electric field formation of potential then amount of work done to introduce more charge on it when this extra charge is introduced uh, what is the potential energy that is stored and this potential energy will give us the result will give us what we need under this topic okay so here we are using the whole concept of capacitor capacitance electric field existence potential existence work done and then potential energy work done it, why because when we are charging the capacitor we are giving it charge charging implies giving charge and when already it is having some charge and we are introducing more charge what will happen they will start showing the action of repulsion okay or attraction if polarity is different there will exist some force because to overcome that force we need to give some work okay we need to do some work to bring that charge in the given uh, in the given configuration so that work we are doing to give that perfect configuration will result in the storage of potential energy and hence our topic will be completed so let's move energy stored in a capacitor over here we have uh, like these one capacitor okay this is capacitor and this is plate 1 c1 this is plate 2 c2 initially this is at uncharged condition uncharged condition this is initial okay now this is connected with a circuit this is connected with a circuit we switched on our circuit and charges started flowing charges started flowing in this direction when charges are flowing these are conductors they will allow the flow of charge because these are not insulators they will not provide hindrance but uh, because they are conductor they will help in the motion of the charges okay conductors now conductors already have some charges in them all ready have 
some charge so initially they will take some amount of charge i will just erase this uh, circuit over here but always remember this circuit do exist okay if this circuit is not existing how we are going to provide the charge so this circuit exist as the space is little less so i am rubbing that now this is the condition final condition or the second condition second condition this is capacitor c plate 1 and plate 2 and there is accumulation of charge on this surface positive charge because the positive terminal is connected to here and this negative terminal connected to here so this plate number 2 will have negative charge they were already having very minimal charge the plates were having very minimal charge already now once we started our battery we started providing more charge up to some point capacitor plate 1 and capacitor plate 2 accumulated charges after a threshold point came after a saturation point came c1 and c2 stopped taking any more charges but we need to give little more charges to them in order to make them have some energy have some capacitance okay so uh, to bring uh, to introduce introduce more charge to c1 and c2 external work is done external work is done we did some work to bring because see this is positive charge and this is negative charge there is generation of electric field there is generation of electric field when electric field is generated we are giving some charge a very small charge del q to the system now when this del q came to the system of c1 and c2 this will start feeling some force of repulsion because they will repel they will not accept it in a room where there is only 10 seats if 11th person comes like you went to a party there is a room or a table which can accommodate 10 of you but you are 12 friends what will you do you will ask the two friends to sit somewhere else and you 10 will sit together but as you 12 friends are very good friends and they are saying that no no we will not sit anywhere else we will sit with you so what will you do you will think for a little time and then you will start doing some work what sort of work either you will bring chair from uh, other tables or you will uh, simply make the chair as a sofa so that four chairs can accommodate five of you okay or you can simply share a single chair like someone who is thin can sit with the other person who is also thin and the other one can take other seats so you will do some or the other work you will make some arrangements okay that is known as external work that should not be basically done like when you are getting going to a party hall there should be availability of uh, enough chairs and tables as per to the requirement but when there is no such things available then you have to do some work so similarly these capacitors already have some charge and they have capacity to add little bit more charge but if we are giving them more more and more charge it will not be possible for them to hold it and to make them hold that extra charge we need to do external work in the given electric field where there is a potential energy due to the pre existing charges due to the pre existing charges okay so they have e as well as v and now we are introducing del q amount of charge so introduce this del q of charge 
what we need we need to do a work equal to del w we will do a work equal to del w to introduce del q of charge into the system of capacitor okay now we did work okay we did work to bring that charge into the configuration what will happen to the work now this done work this work which is done will be stored as potential energy of the capacitor will be stored as potential energy of capacitor and that is what we need that is what the need of the topic need of the r so now we will start deriving the formula and we will get to know how much of the energy is being stored how much amount of work we are doing okay see the first point capacitor system of two conductors which charges plus q and minus q to consider so we determine energy stored in this configuration consider initially two uncharged conductors 1 and 2 to determine energy stored here in this configuration first of all we have taken the conductors 1 and 2 which are uncharged this yellow situation okay charge is transferred to conductor 2 from 1 in such a way that conductor 1 gets charge plus q and by charge conservation conductor 2 has a charge minus q this line this particular point is given as and if we are simply picking up the charges from c1 and uh, giving it to c2 but this uh, line have more meaning than simple statement this line is saying that we are giving some external work or we are giving externally some force to the c1 so the c1 loses some of its electron to c2 when this is happening c1 acquires a charge of plus q and c2 acquires a charge of minus q this external force which we are giving to c1 and c2 for changing or for transferring electrons is known as charging so here basically these plates c1 and c2 are being charged are being charged when they are charged they will start accumulating the charge on it in transferring positive charge from conductor 2 to conductor 1 work will be done externally now see in this we said we are like transferring from 2 to 1 if we are doing vice versa we have to work against the field because see this electric field is from plus to minus okay from plus to minus so transferring alone the electric field may not need any work to be done but transferring against will need work to be done will need work to be done since at any stage conductor 1 is at a higher potential than the conductor 2 why we have to do the work because if we understand with respect to potential uh, potential so potential at plate 1 will always be greater than potential at plate 2 to calculate the total work done we will calculate the work done in small steps involving transfer of infinitesimal small amount of charge now to calculate how much work is done to uh, to transfer a amount of charge q we will take it in the small charges so that small small work done can be calculated and then we will integrate all these small work done to get a total work done to get total work done so the small amount of charge will be del q we will take uh, del q del q and to bring this del q into this system amount of work done is del w okay let us consider an intermediate situation when the conductor 2 and conductor 1 have charges plus q and minus q respectively of course we need to consider a initial position 
a intermediate po position and a final position also why we need to check on three different potential because there will be different different amount of potential which will lead to different work done in this the three stages see initially charge is zero external charge is zero so to bring this charge initially we do not need to do a lot of work or there will not be too much of potential but while it comes to intermediate we have to provide some work from outside and in the final position it will be at a stage of saturation where it's not possible for us to provide any extra charge to the system potential difference v dash between conductor 1 and 2 is given by q dash c where c is capacitance we have seen capacitance is defined as q upon v and v is defined as q upon c so v dash is defined as q dash upon c imagine a small charge del q dash is transferred from conductor 2 to 1 and work done there is a work done to do so because we are going from lower potential to the higher potential so amount of work done is seen there what is the amount of charge we are taking that is del q dash a very small charge work done in the step of del w to bring del q charge into the system del w amount of work is done so this is see here over here this is the amount of work that is been done which is equal to the potential across that point and the charge and this small charge small charge because only these three things plays important role what what is the work done like uh, we define work done in a given potential uh, the charge which is bro uh, brought amount of work done to bring charge from infinity to point p is potential so what we are using in this definition we are using work done one component charge another component and potential third component so in the formula also we will see only three component that is work potential charge now potential as we have seen in the previous equation c equals to q upon v and v equals to q upon c from this equation potential can be rewritten as q dash upon c q dash upon c into del q as such del q came as such whereas v is written as q dash upon c this is a small equation which is written as del w equals to q dash del q dash upon c see over here we are having small small work done and small charge now we want to uh, calculate for the whole this was our capacitor we have taken only this small area to do calculation for the given charge because this small area is only having this small del q charge now we want to calculate for this whole area what we will do we will integrate this equation integrating this equation so here see this will be integrated and uh, dq will be integrated what about c c is constant c will remain as such so integrating it uh, like the work done is integrated from zero charge to q charge 
work done is integrated from zero charge to q charge see over here this is q integration over zero to q integration over zero to q for q dash del q upon w sorry upon c not w please mind that upon c i'll take eraser and write it once again upon c so c will come out it will be like 1 by c 0 to q into q dash del q dash so what about the integration of x dx do you remember the formula of integration as you are going to read in the mathematics so you can just open your maths book and check the various formula of differentiation and integration from it so uh, integration over x dx is given as x square by 2 plus constant like you can simply say x to the power n dx when integrated it will give x to the power n plus 1 divided by n plus 1 plus constant okay so here this n is 1 in our concept in our question n is 1 so 1 plus 1 is 2 that's why it is x square by 2 okay hope you understood how we have integrated this is very much important mostly we forget how to go with the derivation go alone with the derivation because we are not aware of formulas so make a note of this formula this is very much important one and it is like extremely basic formula and most of the derivation goes with a single uh, single like uh, single powered derivations and sorry derivatives and single powered integrations so it will not be tough if you are just remembering the basic five formulas of integration and differentiation it will help you to solve physics very smoothly and easily and understandingly so this 1 upon c will remain the constant and q dash square by 2 will be the integration ka result so this integration's result is integrated from 0 to q now we will add the uh, add the limits to it just one minute i'll just show how we are adding the limits to it see over here after integrating w equals to integrated from 0 to q 1 upon c q dash del q dash so it is integrated as 1 upon c q dash square upon 2 0 to q so in the first case upper limit is q upper limit is q so it will be 1 upon c q square by 2 and lower limit is 0 to 0 square by 2 will be taken this whole term will be 0 and this will remain as such it will be 1 upon c into q square by 2 this can be written as 1 upon c into q square by c 1 upon 2 into q square by c that is the amount of work done that is the amount of work done to bring charge q from some point to the to the capacitor or to the conducting plates or from conducting plate 2 to two conducting plate 1 okay so see here this is what we got q square by 2c and from the final results the results can be written down as work done equals to q square by 2c which is equals to half of cv square which is equal to half of qv in this we are having three components c equals to qv from here we can see one component is capacitance other component is charge and the third component component is potential so in each of these formula only two components are used we got this formula by rearranging this formula okay 
by rearranging this basic formula we have got these four formulas uh, and in these formulas but uh, uh, what is the importance is that when you are provided only with the charge and capacitance but no potential still you can find the work if they have given you capacitance and voltage no charge you can find the work done and in case there is no mentioning of capacitance but only charge and potential still you can find the amount of work done in the system now since electrostatic force is conservative this work is stored in the form of potential energy of the system of course now the final result for potential energy is independent of manner in which the charge configuration of capacitor is built up uh, we do not uh, need to specify how the charge is been built up in the c1 like this is c1 and this is c2 if we provide external work that will be stored as potential energy but it does not depend like how this charge is traveled the charge from c2 can go to uh, the outer world and can come back to c1 can go directly to c1 can go to the head of c2 and then come to the foot of c1 like anyhow whatever means we are transferring charge from c2 to c1 does not matter what matters is the built up of the capacitor that the charge is built up work is done and there is a storage of potential energy is what we need so it is a path independent that's why we say it's a conservative kind of that's why the energy follows the conservative conservation law come to the next point over here when the capacitor discharges this stored up energy is released it is possible to view the potential energy of capacitor as stored in the electric field between the plates considering for simplicity a parallel plate capacitor of area a of each plate and separation d between the plates so this is capacitor 1 capacit sorry cap conductor plate 1 conductor plate 2 which is making the capacitor and they are separated by a distance of d and if this plate is having positive charge and this plate is having negative charge there is a formation of electric field in these electric field in between c1 and c2 potential energy is stored in between c1 and c2 potential energy u is stored okay so now the energy stored in the capacitor is given by first thing is given by u equals to half cv square other is half q square upon c what we have seen so far so this energy stored in capacitor can we can be used to know the energy density also from the energy we can derive the formula for energy density let's see how we can do that energy stored in capacitor is given by u equals to half q square upon c which, which is equal to a sigma so the whole square by 2 into d upon epsilon not into a so here see charge q is defined as charge q is defined as area into sigma where sigma is surface charge density surface charge density how come c surface charge density is defined charge per unit area charge per unit area rearranging we get the value for the charge okay now what about this then this is from the capacitor capacitance is given as 
epsilon naught a upon d we have seen capacitor uh, the cap capacitors capacitance depends upon the size and the shape and even the distance between the two plates more the distance less is the capacitance more the area more is the capacitance c is proportional to area so area increases c also increases and c is proportional to 1 upon d so distance between the two plates distance between two plates increases will lead to lead to c decreasing okay this is the relation here now the surface charge density sigma is related to electric field is related to electric field between the plates how is it related it is related like this electric field equals to sigma upon epsilon naught now from equation 4 and 5 from this equation and this equation we can substitute the value of sigma in this equation okay we can substitute the value of sigma what is the value of sigma sigma equals to e into epsilon naught so from this uh, equation 4 and 5 energy stored in capacitor is given as half epsilon naught e square into ad where ad is volume of the region between the plates see these are the two plates and this is the area and this is the thickness or the distance between the two now what is volume what volume is a side into the area any side into the area so area will be given by this and this now the distance is given by this d so area into this side if we are multiplying it will give us volume here area is a and side is d so this will be equal to volume this will turn into volume we if we define energy density as energy stored per unit volume of space as we have come to a term of volume now this energy density i'll write over here energy density equals to <coughs> energy per unit volume i'm writing it into a simple formula so that it will be easy for you to remember if you are able to memorize the definitions uh, in the form of these short equations or uh, the number alphabetic equations later on you can generate the definition in your own words but always make sure whenever you are writing a scientific definition the definition must be small concise and precise do not give a detailed exploration of the definition definition should end up within 3 to 4 lines and after writing a definition uh, leave some space and then you can continue to explain explaining a concept in science is not wrong but writing definition more than required or giving the whole explanation in the definition is not a good practice so always make it in your practice that you are writing definition precisely and concisely so equation 6 this equation gives energy density of electric field so this is volume this is volume so energy u upon v will be half epsilon naught into e square into ad will be div uh, divided by ad 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 will cancel out we are left only with half epsilon naught into e square so that is energy density energy density is denoted by small u small u okay though equation 7 is derived for the cases of parallel plate capacitor as the result on energy density of an electric field in fact very general and holds true for electric fields due to any configuration of charges this is a note for you to understand see here 
what we are basically doing we are explaining all the concepts based on a parallel plate capacitor we have not introduced any capacitor which is non uniform in the shape we did not define any circular but we have defined a parallel plate capacitor the plates can be rectangular or square it doesn't matter but these plates are parallelly kept to each other and these parallelly uh, kept uh, kept plates store energy okay so all these definitions and formulas we are defining for parallel plate but these formulas and these definitions are true for any case of capacitor they are extremely correct for each and every case of capacitor there is no such limits that it should these equations or these definitions should be used only and only for parallel plate capacitor no it's not like that okay so now we will just give a short summary what we have read in this topic and then we will end up our class see so today we read energy stored in capacitor energy stored in capacitor okay so for capacitor we know it's uh, made up of conductor 1 and 2 and these conductors initially were not charged and later we charge them to some charge of uh, charge of q dash then we try to find a small work done for this just a minute we try to find the small uh, work done for this amount of charge that was del w okay so initially it was like this and then they started having uh, the charge once the charge accumulated we saw that Uh, there was electric field present so electric field was like this and due to electric field there exists a potential so once the potential started existing if we are bringing the charges they need external work to be done external work to be done okay so this was uh, the basic one now uh, see from conductor 1 to conductor 2 it was easy to transfer the charge but vice versa case uh, in the vice versa case from c2 to c1 what happens that potential 1 is greater than potential 2 we need external work to be done to bring charges from c2 to charges at c1 so we uh, that this work which is done is stored in the form of potential energy of system potential energy of system so we will derive the equation once again here this is just for you to understand it uh, nothing like uh, this is extra this is just in a simple page uh, in a last moment kind of revision so v is proportional to the charge and v equals to c q this we know c equals to q upon v c equals to charge upon the potential we know from the capacitance here c is capacitance and q is the charge v is the potential now a small del q charge is introduced in the system which needs work to be done del w work done now this del w is defined as v into del q dash because del q is the charge which is transferred to the potential v and hence del w is the amount of work done from this equation from this equation del w equals to q dash upon c into del q dash integrating the above equation we got integration over del w from 0 to w equals to 1 upon c integrating q dash del q dash from 0 to q we know that 
integration of x n dx equals to x to the power n plus 1 divided by n plus 1 plus c. formula of integration used okay then once this is integrated this will give us w equals to 1 upon c into q square by 2 so work will come equals to 1 upon 2 into q square by c so this is the amount of work done as our forces are conservative in nature conservative what will happen is work done equals to the potential energy stored potential energy stored so potential energy is denoted by u which is equals to work done which is equals to half q square upon c Again this equation from this equation see over here we can write potential energy in various forms. One of the form is half Cv square other form is th this one then another form which we can write we have introduced here Qc Cv now Q and V with the help of q and v half into q upon v into v square this and this will get cancelled and u will be half into q v so these are the three different forms we can in, uh, we can write the formula of our potential energy stored now see over here uh, like uh, our we have got this formula u equals to half of our c v square and this c is denoted as and u equals to half of um, it was q square upon c right so we will take this equation here and we can define this as epsilon naught a upon d and q can be defined as q can be defined as sigma into area because sigma equals to charge per unit area from here this equation is coming introducing this equation in this and even this equation in this we will get u equals to half into q square that is sigma into a the whole square into 1 upon epsilon naught into a upon d. So solving it properly we will get u equals to half into sigma square a square into d upon epsilon naught into a. a and this a will get cancelled and we will get half sigma square a d upon epsilon naught okay and then when we are rewriting it for what we need to rewrite this is the energy stored in the capacitor with respect to its size shape and geometry size shape and geometry right now we need to define energy density energy density it is given energy per unit volume so to define this energy stored what we can do is this is the energy density is given by small u so small u equals to capital U upon volume. So our capital U is half 
into sigma square ad upon epsilon naught into the volume volume is also ad 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 will cancel and the small u will be half sigma square upon epsilon naught right now we know that sigma is related with electric field as e upon epsilon naught okay now we will introduce this formula over here this formula over here and u will become half into e square A little changes over here this is not the relation it is written as sigma equals to e into epsilon naught okay so e square into epsilon naught square instead of sigma we are writing that divided by epsilon naught so this and this will cancel and u will be written as half electric field ka square into epsilon naught so that is the energy density for a given stored energy okay energy per unit volume is the energy density and the last and very important note over here is that all these calculations are done for parallel plate capacitor but these are true for all the sized and shaped capacitors okay this is a very extremely important note hope you have understood the topic energy and the energy volume energy density and you have understood how we have derived so far you are we aware of uh, the basic formulas so let's end up today's class and we'll, this is the last topic of our chapter 2 we'll come up in the next class with a summarized uh, of the chapter 2 till the time take care study well we'll meet up in the next class have a good day bye bye